I can't imagine what they thought when they heard Smash for the first time and the like before it got like produced and before they like uh advertised and said, Hey, this is coming. When he sat down and was like, Okay, let me hear it, and then they sent it to him. I can't imagine what that was like, bro. Brett's talked about this. He didn't park his car. So he was he was sent the he was sent the tapes, I think, and he was doing it on the, at his drive home. And okay. he didn't he 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 just kept listening to it kind of on a loop and didn't park and then famously went in and told his wife um, everything's about to change for us. Like, so that, and he's told that story. So he knew it. He knew it when he heard like the rough, like when it was just about done. That's um, insanity. He, he knew it was at that point. I mean, so then they really, uh, promoted it. K rock was huge. Um, and, okay. and so this was the first song though, by Brett and everyone's account that the first punk song that K rock ever played from a punk label outside of one of their punk rock shows. So there's there's famously there's Rodney on the Rock, which played a lot of punk rock on K Rock, and K Rock obviously the biggest radio station in LA, making it basically right. the biggest rock, the most influential rock radio station in the world. Still is actually very influential even in these days yeah. of dwindling uh, radio. I was gonna say it probably is still pretty. Uh... It's still the tastemaker. If it it basically K Rock approves, and then the rest of everyone else follows. You know, it it, it just sort of tracks. Wow, so, that's um, crazy. So it. So Brett, again, knowing that this was something he, <clears throat> he hired, uh, I think it's called like a radio jammer or something like that. Like someone basically to really help them push it to radio. Okay. Um, kind of almost, almost payola, <laughs> almost in a yeah, way. To, yeah. To, I mean, to, that's probably what actually happened. To 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 be straight up, he had, he had never hired that. He brought all that promotion. So um, Come Out and Play Again was the first song that they re- recollect that was ever really played by just DJs in the rotation, not just in the punk slot. Or, and it really got hit in the... At night, they'd play like the 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 emerging artists thing of just like yeah. local artists and stuff, and it was like number one for um, a section of time. There's you know Fletcher's talked about like also he was just flipping through K Rock and also wait a minute that's the awesome like there's punk rock on K Rock. Dude, that's it kind that's of blew rad. one's mind. And once it starts at K Rock, obviously it goes. But but they really talk about how like yes, there was that little bit of promotion, but this is also the the start of the sound scan era. So everything yeah. was very objectively tracked, and this album was it sold enough and was bit to the right people that it got tracked within SoundScan and was competing. You know, by the end of the year, it was the sixth biggest selling record in the world in 1994. Think of the pop music albums that came out in 1994, one of the biggest years in in uh, in all of music. The uh, you know the year Kurt Cobain passed away. Everything there's all and that plays into this as well. 94 so is much, a, yeah, 94 is a big one. So much uh, so much was going on. It's really the biggest year I think in alternative rock history. You know, punk and, and everything included. Yeah, and this was. Um, really at the forefront, but then again, as as a punk record that grew organically, and the Offspring were pretty unaware of it. They were on tour, uh, I think, uh, supporting supporting Pennywise, supporting No Effects back and forth. The uh, Rancid was supporting them, like they were just on these punk tours as Smash was building and building and building. So they really were still able to build out that kind of punk credibility. And they they took it on the road and they did all this as it's as it's it's building out. So it got it gets to like 120 minutes. Obviously it gets played um, right there. But again, it leaks into the regular rotation, which Green Day is doing at the same time. So it creates that path. But again, Green Day's on reprise. Like Green Day has this major structure behind him. Brett remortgaged his house. Um, Oof, that's crazy, to, bro. So they you know, they eventually got to the point where they literally couldn't fit in the warehouse because they had to. They were trying to meet these orders because that was the thing. You couldn't fail. Like Brett could have. If Brett failed, that's the other thing. If Brett failed, uh, this would have been a disaster. Like if oh, this yeah, album is been, slightly less successful, it's all it would be in that bad spot, right? Where it, it was yeah. too successful, and he would have had to, you know, sell or do whatever it is he had to do. And and no, he that's crazy. He, bro. he mortgaged his house, but took out I think three loans against it. Gets his kids' college savings, like all this stuff. Oof. But didn't seem to have a bunch of worry about it. Like it, they knew it was going to be that good. So it was <laughs> caused the split later because who really deserves credit for it? All of it. Like they all, right? Kind of you know came together. And again, like the Osprey don't leave till 1996. Like they the 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 the, 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 the relationship eventually <laughs> went bad, but it took a while. Like they they did well. They had uh they have they were on MTV. They had just just as well as if you would have been on a major, like there's nothing really, they didn't really do for them or they didn't accomplish that, that like that wouldn't have also been accomplished over there. And talk about like a lesson that set for like fat Mike of being like, screw that. Look what Brett did for them. Why am I going to go to Hollywood records and be the, right. the fifth or sixth most important punk band over there when this guy over here can do this for me. And then I in turn, I'm going to do it for lag wagon and no use for a name and, and all these guys. So it's again, super important. Just what an important record. Okay, my next question before we get into song specifics mm-hmm. would be 
I don't know much about their beef with Epitaph. Why did the offspring leave Epitaph? Okay, so it seems to have been in the long run really a lack of communication, but it was a shocking. It was yeah. <laughs> It was really over credit and control. So okay. what, what it was, was um, as Brett, as the label was growing and growing and growing, and he's having to make, make the side deal with Rancid and all of that, um, they had got wind that they were, they were were he was either, Brett was either going to sell the Offsprings catalog or sell the whole label, obviously, to, you know, basically sell the label. And their perspective is, was with it, like, wait a minute, we can we can do this on our own. Like we can sign to a major. We have the biggest independent thing of all time. Why do we want, our, like, we want to pick the label we're going to go to. If he sells out to, I don't know, whoever say universal or Maverick or like now we're stuck on that label. So they were, oh. and they had, and they had the, and Brett always claims that he was never going to do that because once he got smash out, the label was secure that he was just meeting with these label heads. Now it's also a thing of, they were mad at like he was doing so, so Brett was so in demand, like Brett's in all these business magazines and all this stuff right. as a result of everything that happens with smash. So they kind of got a little bit of cult of personality from him. And again, and so, and his ego is growing. So there's a little bit of that when they okay. are, they built this again, like who really deserves credit. It's hard to say now in Brett's defense, he says they broke or they were attempting to break their contract. They owed one more record. That's what it was. So they actually owed one more record and by that point the offspring didn't really think that that re that it was necessarily enforceable if it really um got to it but it, it it turned um it turned into it turned into this thing where eventually they just got so mad at each other at, over these miscommunications They're like did brett try to sell them i don't know like he claims he didn't but they obviously have to were they annoyed with him with that yeah did they also owe him a, an album yes like all of those things are true it sounds like a thing where they really just couldn't, if they could have kind of come to the table, they probably could have really figured this out and, and done it, you know, in a, in a better way. I think eventually what happened is, uh, Columbia bought out the rights of okay. the record. So Epitaph did benefit from that financially, I think. And they are on some version, they were considered like a co distributive it, but like all of that, you know, went away and like they never had really, they've said they've dropped their beef because it was so long ago and they all went on to really successful things. It's not like any of them really made a bad decision here. Right. But like they never really reconciled it either. It was one of those things of two, mm. two sides got a far. But if you like go back, I have an issue of Rolling Stone where they, they're taking shots at each other. Like, you know, Dexter says, why would I be on an indie when people on in the indies are more evil than the people in the major? Like they are really like, why would I be on a crappy indie? Like, wow. It's, it's a, it's a totally different thing than Green Day, who had no problems with Lookout. Like Green Day, just literally, they said like they couldn't get their albums into stores. Was the thing about right. Green Day? No, they're, they're, Green Day didn't have a gripe; they had a goal. Yeah, and and again, and even Larry Livermore, who he always said like, "I wish I could. What, how come I couldn't have been? We could have been Brett and done this. You really couldn't have. What Brett did was pretty no. unprecedented. So like, I also get the ego that Brett has. So really, and, and Dexter, Dexter and Noodles have both said that if they could have all kind of sat in a room hammered it out figured out what was actually true what was going on the 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 split probably does happen but it would have been way more of a of a amicable more amicable split. yeah brett also fell back into drugs in the mid 90s and, mm. and that is part well, of it too so i think as the ego was growing that was affecting the relationship that's not good for any relationships so. right right and think of uh, it, it like you take the offspring out of it it's still probably a crazy business when this band rancid is going to platinum on you no effects has punk and drubla coming out pennywise right. and everything's going the warp tour is happening you know so there's still a lot going on i think it was just it's too much success really that's what it was it was too much success well by that makes sides. everybody a little more egotistical and a little more uh honestly probably a little more on edge too because you're thinking like oh i'm about to get stabbed in the back and da 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 like that's a real fear when you get mm. famous like that Bro, you start to fear everything, man. Just yeah, because I, you're a... I, I, he alleged that they they claim they asked for a stake in the company too. That was I need to throw that in there. Well, what and, business do they have of asking for that? But, but they they have categorically denied that as well. And he says now he doesn't remember ever saying that, even though it's on the record that he said that. So oh, wow. I'm, just, I'm just saying that to put context to every. Yeah. So this is really like it was. It reminded me of like you know a couple of years ago the New England Patriots broke up because they had too much success. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what that reminds me of. Of just like everyone, yeah. when everyone actually deserves all the credit, like sometimes power dynamics are good in these ways. You know, right. what I mean? like 
playing your role, doing your thing, and kind of that's sometimes good. It's Whenever weird, man. You're both very much contributing to a very successful thing, and in this case, unprecedented. Like this had never happened before, and it did here. Like think of all the history of punk rock.